for those who probably just switching on their TVs and seeing you in Japan, I'm guessing you're not there to visit Disneyland. Help us understand what brings you to town. Hey, hey it's great to be here, um, you know, on the program. And, and to be honest, I've been to Tokyo Disneyland with my daughter many times. I think I've been to Tokyo Disneyland more than I've been to Hong Kong Disneyland. Um, I've, look, I, I have a genuine love for, for Japan. I've been coming here for 35 years since I was five years old. And it's always been such a cool experience. It's this unique country with rich heritage. Um, and if we were lucky enough to build an integrated resort here, um, that will really be a dream come true. So we've set up our offices in, 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 in Japan, in both Tokyo and Osaka, and we have a full team working here. Um, and I come here very often to continue to work with them and continue to, to be part of the, you know, hopefully the opening up of the integrated resort process. Yeah, I mean, we were talking off air. Now, a few more things have to be worked out. Obviously, and among those things, things like you know, bidding out the licenses, things like location, for example. Uh, have you guys and the big players been part of that conversation with Japanese legislators? And you know, I'm just guessing, what has there been any clue what they're looking to open up in terms of location just yet? Well, the you know, this initiative has been 10 years plus in the making for us, so we have had a lot of dialogue with both the national government level and also the local prefecture levels. Um, and it's still a long road ahead, but we are very respectful to, to their process. Um, and we are, you know, patiently and continue to, to play along. But yeah, there are things that needs to be resolved beforehand. So the first um, law was passed, which was the IR promotion law. Um, the second law, which is the implementation law, is yet to be debated and, and, and passed. So I think even after that, um, I think then, you know, a lot of the bidding processes will be crystallized at that stage. So we anticipate the earliest, really, for, for, for the bidding process, and it will be the most competitive bidding process in history. Um, the earliest for that to start would be really maybe end of next year or middle of next year. Why is that? I mean, a lot of people got very excited on the prospect of, you know, when the idea of Japan legalizing casinos came to service, everyone got very encouraged by that news. Why do you think that is? I mean, what's different about Japan, say, from your other businesses in Macau and Manila? Well, I think Japan as a country, if you look at the, um, the population base, and I think it, most importantly for us, it's such an amazing country, it's so unique, but yet the current visitation from foreign visitors is only around you know, 22 million. Um, and in comparison, if you look at a very small place like Macau has over 30 million people, and even um, you know, a city state like Singapore has over 15 million. So the potential for visitation growth into, into Japan is enormous. And you know, the, and, and I feel that Japan is one of the most sophisticated countries and henceforth the visitors ultimately that will be attracted to Japan are going to be more affluent um, and, and really our type of customers. Melco focuses on um, mm. luxury mass customers and I think that's the right type of customers to attract into a country like Japan. Now, I'm sure you've done a little bit of the math, Lawrence. Can you give us a ballpark figure, roughly how much it would cost you to realize that Japan dream and whether or not you think it's going to be an issue raising that kind of money? For, you know, for Melco, we're, you know, we're, we're only interested really, our, our interest lies in the biggest cities because that's where the international airports and where the best infrastructure is and you also have the population base um, to, to back it up. Um, our, our, you know, and I think a resort in Japan will easily be the most expensive integrated resort ever built. Um, you know, typically our resorts in Macau, the ones that we've built, have cost around four to five billion U.S. dollars. Um, I think one in Japan could be, you know, closer to ten billion dollars. Um, but you know, at the same time, I think between the equity markets and also the debt markets, um, all of the global players like us wouldn't, wouldn't have a problem in terms of writing the equity check. 
And just generally speaking, can any big player globally in gaming afford not to be in Japan? Let's put it that way. Well, I don't think you know that that's a luxury or an option um, that is afforded to everybody because ultimately it's going to be the Japanese government and also the local prefecture government that decides mm. and what we're hearing as a first stage is that only two or three licenses will be given um, and so there will be companies that will be will be you know unlucky and unfortunate if you had a choice, would you go at this, would you proceed alone or are you looking to partner with anyone? And if you are looking to partner, can you give us a sense of the types of groups you might be interested in speaking with? I think that's also, you know, the beauty of Malco. You know, I think we've, all, we've, we've always been a company that has been built on collaborations. We've had successful partnerships in Macau, Manila, and also Cyprus. So every jurisdiction we've ever gone into has always had local partners who have helped us and guided us and steered us along. Um, and so we're very open-minded. In an ideal world, we would have as much equity in the project as possible but at the same time we recognize that we want our local partners to have skin in the game and that it's probably a national um, importance for the local um, large corporations or even you know small medium operation uh, corporations to have some sort of stick we're very open-minded to it you know I think out of all of the governments that we've ever worked with um, the common um, the common denominator will always be that we are the most, you know, the, the best corporate citizen for, for to, to work with those governments. Uh, now, Lawrence, just to pivot to Macau, I mean, the last 12, 15 months has really seen uh, a decent recovery overall in the industry there. I think at the moment we're growing by about maybe 20, 25 uh, percent overall on gross gaming revenues there. What to you is a sustainable growth rate? Because at some point the high base effect kicks in and at some point after that, I'm sure current capacity then becomes an issue. Yeah, we were extremely pleased with, you know, Macau went through two very tough years and that was driven by, you know, Chinese policies that affected consumerism, um, uh, the, the consumer sector across the whole, the entire globe. Um, but in the last 15 months, we've had consecutive growth and I think year to date right now, we're around 19%. Um, and like you said, you know, I think you're right that the, the, the comp base was lower. Um, next year, we're going to have much higher comps given the growth this year. Um, but I still think that, you know, given that Chinese GDP is growing at, you know, 6.5% annually, Macau will always grow, you know, faster than that. And so I think a growth rate of, you know, somewhere in the high single digits or low double digits, um, it will be, you know, easily achievable next year. And just very quickly, Lawrence, what's your internal target for putting every, all of your properties together in Macau for next year? What's the target rate of growth? Um, well, you know, we, we don't give a lot of, um, we don't ever give project profit projections, but, you know, I think we are looking at, you know, our, our benchmark has always been we want to um, grow faster than the market because we, we feel that we have premium properties. We're very proud of the fact that we have more Michelin and Forbes awards than, than anybody else in the market and that our properties was really built for the long term. So our benchmark is always slightly, even though we don't have any real new projects coming online other than Morpheus, which is um, one of the most iconic buildings in Asia, um, we feel that we will still grow faster than, than, than the overall market.